The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. At any time in the next half hour, while you're listening to this program, your telephone may ring. Yes? This is the Radio Checking Bureau. Is your radio turned on now? Why, oh, yes, it is. What program are you listening to, please? It's, uh, this is your FBI, just starting. Do you know who sponsors that program? Sure I do. It's my good friends, the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Just last Wednesday, my equitable representative was telling me about a special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. Believe me, that's one great life insurance plan. So naturally... I know that This Is Your FBI is sponsored by the Equitable Society. And in just 15 minutes, I'll give you full information about the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Tonight's FBI file, The Juvenile Shakedown. Your FBI is composed of men who have made a career of crime prevention. And to that end, they recently completed a nationwide survey which showed that in the United States last year, there were committed the appalling number of 1,600,000 crimes. Far more disturbing to your FBI than that total number of major crimes, however, was the fact that the number committed by boys and girls in the 17 to 21 age group was out of all proportion. That means that America is raising a new bumper crop of criminals, a crop which will make the current crime wave seem puny unless something is done. Something is done and done quickly. Whether you have a child in that age group or not, this is your problem because you are an American. And if nothing is done to alleviate the present condition, you will also be making it easier for new criminals to be born. New criminals whose victim could be you. Tonight's FBI file opens in a city in upstate New York. Two teenage boys have just left a large department store. Well, Curly, I guess that takes care of our shopping for today. Yeah. What'll we do now, Rip? I don't know. Can we uh, go to the movies? Well, let's get rid of this stuff first. What do we score for? Uh, Five fountain pens, those two silver money clips, and them cufflinks. Hey, that's good, huh? Not bad. Just a minute, boy. What? I want to talk to you. And what about? I was watching you in that store. We didn't do nothing. I saw you lift those pens. Rip, you're crazy, mister. I also saw you steal some cufflinks. Rip, let's blow. No, you don't. Let go of me. I'm not a cop. Huh? I just want to talk to you. Let's walk. I, I don't get this. I have a proposition that you might be interested in. Is this a trap or something? No, no. As long as you boys indulge in larceny, I think I can put you next to something big. What do we do, Rip? We'll talk to him. What can we lose? Fine. Now, I have a candy store a few blocks from here. Let's go over there right now, huh? Hey, Rip. Yeah? This is fun, huh? Fun? Riding on top of freight train? Oh, sure. (laughs) It's something I always wanted to do. We didn't come here for no joyride, Curly. We got work to do. Hey, tell me the plans again. 
Well, the candy store guy said we should stay here until we come to a water tower. Then we go into action. I still don't see how we get down in the car. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? You hold on to my legs, I reach down, break the seal, and open the door. And we just swing in. Oh, yeah, I remember now. And then we throw out the boxes, and Mr. Brown comes along in his truck and picks them up. Right. Don't nobody guard these trains? Sure. Just got to keep our fingers crossed that nobody spots us. Hey, you know... Hey, wait I... a minute. Huh? There's the water tower. Come on, let's get started. Oh, okay. Get around here and grab my legs. Well, sure, Rip. How's that? Okay. Hold on tight. Oh, I will, Rip. Honest. Here I go. Can you reach the seal? Do you hear me, Rip? Can you reach it? Rip! Okay. Pull me up, Curly. Okay. There. Did you open it? Yeah. Well, let's swing in and watch yourself, Curly. It ain't too easy. Ah, look, anything with muscles I ain't afraid of. I'll go first. Go ahead. Well, here I go. Come on, Curly. That was a breeze. All right. Now, let's get to work. Hey, uh, do we throw out all these boxes? No, just about 20 of them. Rip. You want some candy? Put it away. They're good. Mr. Brown gave them to me. Let's get going on these boxes. Hello, Bill. Hi there, Jim. Been looking for you. I've been out doing a little road work. Well, judging by those shoes, it was a muddy track. <laughs> it was. The case came in this morning. The Albany office reported it to us. What's it about? A freight car was broken into. Twenty large cartons of cigarettes were stolen, worth about $1,500. In our local freight yard? No, while the train was en route from here to Albany. The job wasn't discovered until they arrived there. Well, what could you do at this end? Well, I worked with the railroad police. Tried to establish where the stuff had been thrown off. Did you find anything? Yes, we located the spot. It's about 20 miles west of here. How'd you arrive at that? Well, one of the cartons was found near the roadbed. It had broken open so the thieves didn't bother to take it, I guess. We also found indentations about every 20 yards where the other cartons had landed. Any leads on who the thieves were? Well, a brakeman said he saw two boys jump off the train a few miles past the place where we found the broken carton, so I imagine they did the job. Did the Albany office have anything? Well, they're out now examining the freight car. What else did you get? We found some tire markings, truck size. Also, some footprints. And they appeared to be a man's prints, not a boy's. Then they had a Confederate pick the stolen goods up. I would think so. We took an impression of the tire treads and the footprints. We also measured the length of the man's stride. I'm sending these off to the laboratory now. Hiya, Rip. Hi, Curly. Did you see Mr. Brown? Yeah. Did he give you the dough? Uh-huh. How much? I didn't count it yet. It's in this candy box. What's it in there for? Didn't want anybody in the store to see the payoff. Oh. Can we open the box now? Well, let's go in this alley. Okay. Uh, this'll do. Hey, maybe there's candy in there, too. Need any help? No. Here we are. What's in there, Rip? How much? Well, let me count it, will you? And 10 is 30. Is that all? It can't be. Let me look under this paper. Any more? No. Not a dirty, cheap punk. That stuff was worth 50 times as much. Well, let's go back there, Rip. Let's go back and I'll let him have it. No, that won't do any good. Look, if I belt him a few times, we'll get more. Really, don't all the time think about using muscle. What else can we do? Leave him alone for now. We'll go back there later. Why wait? Because I've got an idea. Jim. Oh, yes, Phil. You came in just in time. There's teletypes for you. Oh? What's it about? It's from Washington. Looks like a laboratory report on those footprints you sent down there. Good. 
Here you are. Thanks. Footprints and length of stride indicate men about 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing close to 200 pounds. Jim, have you heard anything from Albany? Yes, yes. They found several fingerprints on that freight car seal that might mean something. Anything else? Yes. Several candy wrappers were found on the floor of the car. All of them here. Here you are. Mm-hmm. Looks like a taffy wrapping. Mm-hmm. I've already contacted the company that makes this candy, and they said they distribute it to about a dozen stores here in town. Well, if the boys who broke into that car live here, that might be a way of identifying them. Yes, I know. The candy company is sending me a complete list of those stores as soon as they can check on their records. What have you done with the fingerprints? Well, I forwarded one set to Washington, and because youngsters are involved, I also sent another set to the local police. I'm hoping that that'll bring us some results. Go ahead, Curly. Right. Hello, Mr. Brown. Oh, hello there, boys. Just closing the store. We want to talk to you. I'm afraid we'll have to wait till tomorrow. We want to talk now. Well. It's about that dough you gave us, Mr. Brown. What about it? It wasn't enough. We want more. Lots more. Just like that, huh? Yeah. Boys, you were paid exactly what you were worth. That's all you get. Now, look, Curly. I'll handle this. Mr. Brown, we want another hundred bucks. Please get out of here. I'm closing now. We ain't leaving here till we get it. Now, look. I don't want to make any trouble for you, but if you don't get out, I'm calling the police. And what will you tell them? That you're thieves. She came in here to shake me down. Will you tell them why we're shaking you down? I'll say that you stole some goods from a freight car. Tried to sell it to me. And you think they'll believe you? Yes. Yeah. I'm a respectable businessman. I've got some news for you, Mr. Brown. That story won't stand up for nothing. Why not? Because I'll have a story, too. That'll make a bum out of yours. <laughs> tell it to him, Rip. Sure. I'll tell the cops that we're just kids. Poor kids. You got a hold of us and poured evil thoughts in our ears. You threatened to do all kinds of things to us if we didn't go out and steal for you. I'm telling you, I'll really lay it on, Mr. Brown. <laughs> They'd never believe you. They would the way I'd tell it. I got a lot of talent. I can look sad. Real sad. And I can cry, too. Real tears. Look, watch me. He made us do it, Your Honor. He made us become bad boys. He made us steal that stuff in the freight car. He was the one, Your Honor. He was the one. Do you like that, Mr. Brown? That's just a sample. I pull that on a judge. We get let free. And you do 20 years. Now, where do we stand? I'll get you the money. We will reopen tonight's FBI file in just a moment. Now, a special message to men on the way up. To the man whose friends or business associates talk about him like this. That Jim Ward is a man to watch. I hear he's had three raises in the past three years. One of these days, he'll be going into business for himself. And when that day comes, Jim Ward has the kind of life insurance program that can be adjusted to fit his new status in life. Years ago, his equitable society representative picked Jim as a coming man. So he advised Jim Ward to invest in an equitable life insurance plan for men on the way up. A special plan for people whose earning capacity can be expected to increase as they become more experienced in their business or profession. I may be fooling myself, but I think that's a pretty good description of me. So how about telling me a little bit more about this plan? Well, this equitable society plan for men on the way up has three major advantages. First, it gives you and your family needed protection right now. Second, this equitable plan provides for readjustments in the future. Five years from now, when you're making more money, you can make up your mind whether you want more protection or bigger cash values. Or you may decide to work out a retirement program. Third, this equitable plan is flexible at all times. Can expand or contract as you see fit. To me, that's a brand new angle on life insurance, Mr. Keating. How can I get the whole story? Just get in touch with your equitable society representative and ask him about the equitable plan for people on the way up. Why not phone him soon? Or send a postcard care of this station... 
to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Juvenile Shakedown. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI is shocking because it shows the evil machinations of an adult in making criminals of youngsters and thereby effectively hampering any chance they might have had of becoming decent law-abiding citizens. The depth to which human beings can sink, apparently, has not yet been reached. But each year, new evidence is uncovered that somewhere a human being has done something which is unspeakable. It is obvious that there is great need for people to examine their morals, because we may currently be headed in the wrong direction, headed in the direction which has led to the downfall of every civilization yet built by man. Tonight's file continues at the local FBI field office. Special Agent Jim Taylor is working at his desk. Say, Jim. Yeah? What's happening on that freight car job? Oh, I just heard from the local police bill. They've identified one set of fingerprints as belonging to a boy named Ralph Sterling. His nickname is Rip. What's his record? Well, he spent two years in a reformatory. He was convicted for a series of petty thefts. When was he released? About two months ago. Do they have an address on him? Yes, they checked with his parents, but he disappeared from home about ten days ago. Hasn't been seen since. Well, that certainly doesn't help much. Yes, I know. Bill, there's another angle on this case that I've been giving quite a bit of thought to. What's that? The man who drove that truck. Now, the local authorities tell me there's been a series of thefts lately by youngsters here in town. Yeah? And the articles that were stolen weren't the usual thing that kids would take, or for that matter, could dispose of easily. So it's highly possible that the man who drove that truck could be operating an organized gang of boys. You know, in that case, finding this Sterling boy really becomes important. Exactly. Oh, I've got that list of candy stores here. I'm going out now and check them. Hey, Rip. Yeah? How's our dough holding out? We got about 20 bucks left. Oh, we spent that much? Sure, we got these clothes, didn't we? That took most of it. Guess we better think about doing another job. We don't have to. But, Rip, we gotta get dough. I wouldn't like it being broke again. We'll get dough. How? From Mr. Brown. He already paid us. That was only a down payment. I don't get it. We got that guy where we want him. He's a real good shake for us. All we have to do is drop in on him once in a while, remind him of that story I gave him, and we never have to work. What can I do for you? My name is Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Yes? Here are my credentials. I see. I'm looking for information, and it's possible that you can help me. Well, I certainly try. Thanks. I have a candy wrapper here. Uh, do you sell this brand of candy? Let me see. Here you are. Well, yes, I sell quite a good deal of this brand. Do you know a boy named Ralph Sterling? His nickname is Rip. Sterling? Why... No, I don't believe I do. I'd like you to look at this picture. Surely. Have you ever seen that boy? No, sir, I never have. He was involved in a robbery. What makes you think I might know? Well, candy wrappers similar to the one I just showed you were found at the scene of the crime. Oh? I'm trying to establish where that candy was purchased. Well, I certainly wish I could be of more help to you. Well, thanks anyway. Oh, uh... Let me have a package of those cigarettes, will you? Oh, sure. There you are, sir. Thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, you can keep that picture. And if young Sterling should come in here, please get in touch with us at once. Hello, Mr. Brown. Well? We thought we'd drop in and see you. What do you want? We kind of got trouble. That's your affair. It's yours, too. We got money trouble. What do you mean? We're fresh out of it. 
I've already paid you. Yeah, but we spent it. Well, that's your misfortune. It's also yours. We want more. Oh, I see. You're going to make a steady habit of this, I presume. Only when things get tough. We want 50 bucks, Mr. Brown. I, I haven't got that amount in the store. Look, don't stall. Mr. Brown, you want I should do my crying act again? No. And get it up. I can't give it to you now. Come back later. Is this a brush off? No, no. Come back here at 10 o'clock tonight. 10 o'clock? You told us the other day you close up at 9. Well, I live in the back of the store. Just rap on the door. I'll hear you. Okay. See you later. Oh, Bill. Bill, are you busy? No, well, not very, Jim. How'd you make out? No luck. Cover all the candy stores? Yes, I went to all 15 of them. They'd never seen young Sterling. Oh, has there been any word from the local police? No. Bill, would you mind doing a little tabulating with me? No, not at all. Okay. Now, every package of those cigarettes that were stolen had a New York State cigarette tax stamp on them. Now, those stamps are numbered, and I have a list of all the numbers here. Quite a list it is, too. Yes, but our job won't be too complicated. Each candy store I went into, I bought a package of the same brand of stolen cigarettes. I have them all here. Are the uh, numbers on this list all consecutive? That's right. Okay, read them off. Right. Now, this first pack was bought at River Street Stationers. Number 11324. Mm, let's see. 234. Mm -hmm. No. Okay, next pack bought at Wilson's Candy Store. Number 13356. Wait a minute now. Should be on this page. Yeah, here we are. No, oh, that's a blank too, Jim. Here's the next one. Bought at Brown's Candy Store. Number 14195. Well, that might get us something. There's a list here of 14s. Let's see. 14195? That's it. It's right here on the list, Jim. Look. Right. Yes. Brown's Candy Store. Bill, let's check the Motor Vehicle Bureau at once. Find out if Mr. Brown has got a truck. I don't think he's in there, Rip. Wait, the light just went on. Here he comes. Oh, swell. Hello, Mr. Brown. Come in, boy. Okay. Go ahead, Curly. Right. Come this way. My living quarters are back here. When you didn't answer the door, we thought you were handing this one. Didn't we, Rip? Yeah. You got the dough, Mr. Brown? I'm getting it for you. Right in here. Go ahead. Right. Put on the light. There. Hey, what happened? What do you mean? All your furniture turned over. All them papers scattered around the floor. Was you drinking, Mr. Brown? No, I'm quite sober. Look, even that window's broken. How can you live in a joint like this? It isn't like this usually. I arranged it just for you. What do you mean? Well, inasmuch as frame-up seemed to be in order, I thought you boys deserved one, too. What's he talking about? I have my dramatic moments, too, Rip. You see that broken window? Yeah. You boys did that. Huh? You broke in here to rob my store. I found you. There was a struggle. That accounts for the scattered furniture. And then what do you think happened? What? Just as things looked bad for me, I was able to get my gun, this gun. What is this? It's self-evident. I had to shoot you both in self-defense. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Brown. You must be kidding or something, huh? No, I'm quite serious. Look, we'll go away from here right now. We'll never bother you again, will we, Curly? No, Mr. Brown, honest. Please, put down that gun. Please. Sorry, boys. No, don't. Put that gun down, Brown. Oh, what are you... Come on, let me have it. What? Well, you're... You're the man from the FBI. That's right. Well, I'm certainly glad you're here. That's the boy you're looking for. I just caught him and his friend in the act of rifling my store. That's a lie. He's trying to frame us. I know. I followed you into the store and I overheard your whole conversation. Well, you had no right this to come This warrant in. says I had. What? Yes, it's for your arrest, Brown. You see, there was a tax number stamped on those cigarettes I bought here today. And they corresponded with one of the cigarette packages this boy stole. Well, I had We've also to... established that your truck was used to pick up the boxes that were thrown from the freight car. Now, I think we'd better continue this at my office. Frank Brown, the 
illicit storekeeper was sentenced to five years in a federal penitentiary as a receiver of stolen goods. The two boys were tried, convicted, and sent to a federal reformatory. In connection with tonight's case from the files of your FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, has this to say to you listeners. I quote, In those communities providing our youngsters with the wholesome, creative influence of boys' clubs, special attention is being given the very worthwhile program of the Boys' Clubs of America as part of the observance of National Boys' Clubs Week. The tremendous increase in crime that this nation has experienced in recent years is a stern warning to the adults of the land. They have the responsibility of providing youth with the facilities and opportunities for preparing themselves to take their places as the citizens of tomorrow. If this responsibility is recognized, we can expect better citizens in the future. If it is disregarded as it has been too often in the past, chaos will result. I hope for the day when every week will, in fact, become a week of observance and one of adequate provision for the youth of our land, when boys' clubs will flourish in every community in the nation, and when crime will no longer menace our nation as it does today. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. If you're what President Thomas I. Parkinson of the Equitable Society describes as a man with faith in his own future and the future of America, then you'll surely want to learn more about the Equitable Society plan for men on the way up. Exactly how much will this plan cost me? The Equitable Man has the answer. How much protection does it give me right now? Your Equitable Representative can work that out in two minutes. Does this plan offer me desirable options? You bet it does. Your Equitable Man will be glad to give you further facts and figures on the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Find him in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Unfortunate Daughter. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI as a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Unfortunate Daughter, on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned now for radio's biggest money-paying quiz show, Break the Bank. Tonight's jackpot contains an amazing $3,450. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.